Hi, I'm Gavin Waring, and in this section of How Not to Commit Business Suicide, we're talking about what to do if your business is in trouble. In this section, I particularly want to focus on companies, and I have with me today Marling Oost, who is my colleague as well as operations manager for your business, Angel. So, welcome again. Thank you very much. Okay, someone walks in and says, look, I think my company's in trouble. I've got a particular letter from the ATO. I've got a creditor pursuing me, whatever. What are the sorts of stories you hear when people say, I, I really now must seek professional help to solve my business problems? In general, what I, what I hear when a client comes in, they most of them did receive letters from the tax office or they got letters from collection agents chasing them for money or even behind lodgements for the company returns and that's the reason why they mainly come in. Is a lot of these problems solved um, by doing the accounts, cleaning up, making a deal with the ATO, well, talking to creditors? Yeah, it's particularly, it's a start of solving a problem. Always the accounts need to be up to date before we can actually find out what's happening to a company and how we can deal with the issues. So it's always the first most important step is to bring the accounts up to date. A lot of our clients who actually visit us don't have their accounts up to date. You will be surprised. Yeah. I, w I want to talk about when uh, a director or a stakeholder of a company has actually exposed themselves to personal liability in the way that they've run the company because the idea of a company is that a company is separated from what happens in your own life. Um, for example, what what is a, 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 a debit loan account? A debit loan account? Well, <laughs> that's a good one. It means that the company has given money to the director and the director actually has to pay it back to the company. And that, w that way we see it as the, the director most of the times didn't draw any wages. And we do advise our clients always to draw a wage. So um, if, if somebody thinks they're paying themselves simply by drawing money from a company, they're not, they're exposing or creating personal risk for themselves. Definitely. And they're not even aware of that. Because most people believe if you own a company, they think all the money that's in the company belongs to them. That's the way people see it in a small business and there's only one director, but in real life, that's not the case. Always draw a wage. Um, when a company looks like it's in trouble and uh, you're advising to go through one of the formal insolvency processes, what happens, say, with things that, that might be outside of the, that, like, for example, a credit card that a director's used to run the company? Mm. Is that their liability as well? It's their liability. Even though you have a company credit card, the director or even a partner of the director always sign a personal guarantee for a credit card. So that means the person, the director is always personal liable for that credit card debt. So if a director's actually used a credit card, effectively they've become a creditor of the company, they've put money into the company. Yeah, if you put it that way, yes. yes. Okay. What about personal guarantees with uh, trade creditors, for example? Um, what happens if a company goes through an insolvency process and there are personal guarantees with a creditor? Unfortunately, personal guarantees would need to be paid by the director or the director's wife, whoever signed a personal guarantee. As soon as the company goes through an insolvency procedure, the creditor then finds out about the insolvency and instead of coming after the company, um, they will come after the director personally. In uh, the process of owning a company or running a company mm -hmm. as well, there's still a lot of protection? Yes, for sure. Okay. For sure. The house is always protected in general. Yep, for sure. If you run a company, it's a separate legal entity, so the director is separate from the company. So, to a large degree, if, if somebody's going into business and they form a company, and of course these are issues of how they borrow money and put money into the company, but if they're following proper Australian accounting standards, if they've been well advised, they're running a business and keeping their own personal assets uh, protected to a degree? Not to a degree, I think to the 400%. To 400%. Uh, do you think that there's any other issues that somebody who's facing trouble in, in a company should think about? You always have to think about where you put your other assets, like a lot of clients have a company car and that's something we would need to look into regarding yeah, motor vehicles or machinery and equipment. What's your experience since you've been working in this twilight zone, you could say, with people who have a business in trouble? What, what's the success rate of doing turnarounds and solving their problems? The success rate? 
well, well, I can't say 100%, even though I wish so, uh, I would probably say 95%. So that if somebody's traded in a company, the chances of solving a problem is far greater than ever, say, in being a sole trader or a partnership. Oh, yeah. You can't even compare. Okay. Marlies, as always, it's great to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.